Pure crazy time for the insiders now as we count down to trade center Darren Drager, Pierre Lebrun, and Chris Johnston. So Timo Meyer, everybody seems to be in on him with good reason. 31 goals in 57 games so far this season in San Jose. But St. Louis, Pierre, aren't they the team selling assets right now? Yeah, maybe doing a bit of everything. And, you know, Blues GM Doug Armstrong told uh, reporters over the weekend that he wants us to be a pretty quick retool. He's looking for players who are 25, 26 years old as he reloads over the next year. Well, guess what? Timo Meyer, 26 years old. And, yes, we're told the Blues have inquired with San Jose on Timo Meyer. Remember, the Blues now have three first-round picks, and my understanding is the Blues will be ready to part with two first-round picks in a package for Meyer. But, again, they're not alone in this. As you mentioned, James, lots of interest. Um, the Winnipeg Jets are also among the teams that I've inquired. Uh, Vegas and, of course, the two teams that we've keyed on for a while, New Jersey and Carolina, I still think are the front runners. Some of the fascinating teams around this time of year, the ones teetering on the line between buyers and sellers, and Washington fits into that category. Two points out of a wild card spot entering play on Tuesday night. So, CJ, what do they do with Dmitry Orlov? Well, this is a potentially significant development because Orlov's name has started to emerge in trade chatter. And I think that there's a couple reasons for this. The one that you key on there, the fact that they're sputtering a bit in Washington. Teams are calling Brian McClellan to see what he's going to do with his UFAs. There's also the fact that the Capitals have been negotiating with Orlov. And I was told by well-placed source on Tuesday that there's, those talks are nowhere right now. There's no progress towards a deal. And so, you know, I don't think the Capitals have given up on signing Orlov. I don't think that they are committed to being full-on sellers. But if they get either a strong offer right now or he's unsigned at the end of next week, I think they have a very interesting decision on Orlov. Yeah, look, this is a huge game and a huge week. Several days, in fact, for both the Washington Capitals and the Detroit Red Wings. And, James, I might have bad news for you because we're going to soon start to eliminate, pull names off the trade bait list, including... Tyler Bertuzzi of the Detroit Red Wings. Now, the decision has been made, unless something goes horribly wrong this week and leading up to the March 3rd trade deadline, that they want to give this group in Detroit the opportunity to really push hard for a playoff spot. They're willing to take their chances on a contract extension with Bertuzzi on July 1st. Again, a lot can change between now and March 3rd, but the Red Wings are trying to lock down a playoff spot. Hurtful, disappointing report from you, Dregs. Uh, maybe Nashville can get into the game. They're a little bit further back than Washington, the other side we were talking about. Seven points out, a couple of games in hand on the team they are chasing right now. So what do they end up doing, Pierre? Yeah, so James, I mean, the Predators haven't given up on the season. They got some winnable games uh, later this week, uh, you know, with, with Arizona as well as San Jose. But in the meantime, I think David Poyle has felt he has no choice but to explore the market to protect himself. And over the past several days, he has talked to teams on a number of his guys. Notably, the player of interest for a lot of teams is Matthias Ekholm, top four veteran defenseman, 32 years old, who still has a couple more years left, though, on his contract at $6.25 million, and that might scare off some teams but he is of interest so again the preds aren't uh, full-on sellers but they've begun to investigate the market keep an eye on them